I'm going to try to make this video as quick as I can. This is an unexpected video. I was watching Judge Mathis and there was a case on there where this woman was taking her nephew to court for a loan. And I think the loan was a couple of hundred dollars. After the court case, and this is one thing I really despise, after the court case, she says to her nephew, but I still love you. I hate when people do that. Don't take me to court and then tell me afterwards that you love me because if you love me, you would not have taken me to court. You would have even tried to work with me or if you couldn't work with me, sometimes forgiveness is the best answer. Court should always be a last resort unless it's a considerable amount of money. And I understand completely about making a person accountable or making a person responsible for their debt that they owe. But some debts should be just forgiven. Now, I had people to respond. And this one woman says to me that it tells a lot about my character and that how uh, the person should be made accountable for the loans. Like if you borrow money from someone, I have brothers and sisters. And there were cases when my brother had borrowed money from me, maybe a couple of hundred bucks. And I'm not the kind of person that I would try to track you down or I run you down. If you owe me, I'm not going to run you down. I'll ask you about it a few times. But then when I see that you're making excuses or you refuse to pay it, I'll say, you know what? Keep it. Not everybody is able to do that. I'll say, you know what? Just keep it. You're going to need me again. And the next time you need a loan, I'm not going to be here for you, especially if I'm the only one that you can count on to help you in the time of need. So you keep that. That's a blessing to you. I just know not to loan you money in the future. What did he do? He made a way to pay me back. He ended up paying me, paying me back because he know once I cut him off, you're off. I don't care what kind of situation you fall into. If I loan you some money and then you refuse to pay me back because you feel in your heart, that's my brother. I don't have to pay him right now. I can take care of every other debt except for my brother. Brothers and sisters think like that. Family members think that way. They don't feel that they should have to pay their family member back. But I'm the kind of person that would say, you know what? You keep that. Just don't come to me again trying to borrow money because the answer is going to be no. But I want to read a scripture to you now. This is referring to the people of God, the people of Yah. And it can also apply to your immediate family members. And it's taken from 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 1st to the 11th verse. And it reads as follows. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? In other words, you should be able to go to the saints of the Most High. This is dealing with the church. But again, the same can apply to your immediate family. The second verse says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? In other words, these things that we take to court are very small matters. You're tying up the court for a few dollars when you can either just forgive it 
And some people may think like, well, it's better to take it to court than to get into some type of physical altercation. Right. Which it should never get to that point. Because you have people that feel it's not. It's the principle behind it. You know, you're taking from me, you're taking from my family, you're taking food out of my kid's mouth. So now I'm going to get violent with you because you refuse to pay me back. That's the wrong way to go. Because in the end, nobody wins. The third verse says, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to to this life. Now, it's interesting that you always hear people say that only God can judge me. Or they love to use that verse that says, judge not lest ye be judged. But here's a scripture that's telling you, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And then the fourth verse says, if then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. The sixth verse says, but brother goeth to the law with brother and that before the unbelievers. In other words, you're not only taking your brother to court, but you're going before someone that don't even believe in God. I'll read that again. Brother goeth to law with brother and that before the unbelievers. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. That's what it says. The ninth verse says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, meaning homosexuals, gay, LGBTQ, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The 11th and final verse says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I'm going to go back where it says at the very first verse, the first and second verse I'm going to read, it says, dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust. In other words, you're going before the unjust to settle your dispute instead of settling that dispute among yourselves and not before the saints. The second verse says again, do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So I understand where people feel they need to go to court to keep from being violent towards someone because they owe you because it can, it can, it can get quite messy. But don't tell me you love me after you finish suing me. Because forgiveness is much greater and forgiveness is a great way 
to demonstrate that you love that person than taking them to court. There's an old saying, actions speak louder than words. So by you forgiving your debt sometimes, not all the time, because yes, a person should be made accountable. But sometimes it's better to just, you know what? You go ahead and keep that. Because you have a lot of people out there that love to talk about making somebody else accountable. But yet, you're behind in your debts. You're behind in your insurance, your car payment. You're behind in your rent, in your mortgage. And then, you don't feel they should evict you for not paying the rent. What about some of y'all that's low income? And they give you an opportunity to move into a nice home or a nice neighborhood. And you move in and your children destroy things. Destroy the bathroom, the kitchen. Destroy the front door. And now the landlord has to pay out of his pockets to repair that. And then you get upset and don't feel he should go up on the rent. Or when he decides to evict you, you feel like now I got kids. You put me and my kids out on the street. But yet somebody in your family owes you a couple of hundred dollars. And you now ready to take them to court. You now ready to do physical harm to them and make them accountable. But yet you're not accountable for the debts that you had incurred from someone else. How many times did a credit card company have to charge off accounts that you refuse to pay? But yet you expect them to forgive you, but yet you can't forgive your own family member. So like I said, not everybody is in the position that I'm in to be able to forgive a debt. But if you're going to take me to court, don't tell me afterwards that you love me. Oh, I still love you, though. You my brother. You my nephew. I'm going to always love you, though. No, you don't. Stop being fake and phony. Because if you really love me, you will forgive me rather than taking me to court, especially if you feel or you see that I'm struggling. So feedback. Tell me what you think. Chime in on it. Until next time, I'm fearless.